Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie, a we of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie, a we pastor of Treasure House ICGC. We continue with our series, Honor Life Heads and Head actually grew him as the son of god pain and hurt grew jesus as the son of god how much more us you are much more ordinary and you are not the son of god jesus grew through pain he he grew through negative circumstances do you know that even when you do dumb things god can use them for good he can use your stupid decisions the the, the stupid situations you find yourself in he can use them for good there's an interesting story about a man called Philemon or Philemon, depending on where he went to school and who taught you English. He was a godly man, a Christian who loved Paul. And, and they were good friends. A man who was generous. Philemon had a slave called Onesimus. He was an irritable sort. He ran away from um, Philemon. He didn't appreciate the job he had. He was a little bit rebellious he ran away and he ended up in trouble in his trouble he gets convicted and he gets put in prison he gets put in prison with the apostle paul and paul sits and ministers to him finds out who he is he then leads him to jesus and he says you need to go back and you need to apologize to my friend you need to go and sort things out pretty difficult thing to do now he writes a letter to philemon and he says i want to tell you about what's happened so let's go to the book of uh philemon or philemon chapter one and i'm reading verse 15 to 16. he says perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a while was that you might have him back forever no longer as a slave but better than a slave as a dear brother he's very dear to me but even dearer to you both as a fellow man and as a brother in the lord in other words this bad thing that he did actually may be god maybe god allowed it this bad thing that he did actually maybe god allowed it to happen so that he could be saved and he could be one of uh your closest allies one of your best servants some of the things we do god has got his hand on it when life is cutting uh, you down god is actually growing you up and we need to recognize that and not become discouraged i remember the story of the founder of the holiday inn hotel group he was fired from his job where he worked and he went home and he said to his wife i've been fired she said that's okay let's take our savings and let's start a hotel you've always wanted to do it anyway so this is the opportunity now that you've been fired and he started the holiday in group and he never looked back imagine if you met him and you said i heard your boss fired you you need to, you need to take uh uh take him to employment tribunal he would have he would, he would tell you no i love him praise god for my boss i'm sending him a big thank you card with flowers he is awesome you'll be like what he realized that when life is cutting you down god is actually growing you up if he was standing in a queue to collect unemployment benefit and uh, he had lost his car he would have a different perspective wouldn't he that boss of mine he will probably be, be be talking to strangers telling them about what happened to him you can either take it as completely negative and you can make the person uh, your enemy or you can say you know what in this i wonder if god hasn't got something more amazing for me because if he's in control it's not just the head and the pain Beloved, you've got to know 
the love of God when you face hurts. And the love of God will help you. There is a scripture in the book of Romans which we all know. Romans 8.28 It says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according uh, to His purpose. You've not just been called. You've been called for a purpose. God is working out something uh, in your life. The verse 31 says this. Ooh, God's word is so good. He says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Which boss? Which negative person? Which family member? It's not important because God is behind everything. Look at what it says in uh, verse 37. Yet in all these things, all these things means all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us when god loves you everything changes and you no longer see life cutting you down you see god growing you up because if he's in control of everything if god is in control of everything he's not going to allow you to be damaged dallas willard the american philosopher said for those who love god nothing irredeemable can happen to you for those who love god nothing irredeemable can happen to you god is looking or God, let me put it this way: God is working it out. God, there's a song like that. God is working it out. He he work it out. God, God is involved. Let me give you a truth: the knowledge of love helps overcome the burdens of life. The knowledge of love helps overcome the burdens of life. When you know that God loves you, that he 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 won't just let anything happen to you that doesn't fit His purpose, then everything changes. You can go through hurt. And he can say, I'm head, but I'm still loved. And I'm going to trust God for my future. The next point is, remember, Jesus controls your life, not the person who hurts you. They are not in charge, you know. God is in charge. You can often allow people to control your life. They are, you can allow their heads to rule your life. But you need to remember that Jesus actually controls your life. Anything that's happened uh, is happening within his plan. The problem with many of us Christians is Christians are often dazed. Dazed believe that the world operates uh, without God's control. The world operates without God's control. He started it in the beginning like a clock. He wound it up and the clock is ticking, tick, tick, tick. God is in heaven. He's having um, a cappuccino, right? And he's chatting to Jesus about eternal matters. His feet are on his footstool and the clock is ticking. Tick, 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 tick. So when your spouse dies or there's a challenge or a sickness or a disaster or there's an earthquake, God is not involved in it. He's not involved in anything. He's just He just stands back and he says, I wound it up pity one day um, it, it's all going to crash down finally when the clock has run out and the alarm goes off he comes back and he says okay it's time to close up shop that's not how we believe the world is the bible does not teach that it teaches that god is involved in everything even the negatives and he doesn't seek to harm he always seeks to bring out his will and purpose that's why it's very hard to understand how the Jews are God's chosen people and six million of them were exterminated. You'll never be able to get your head around that in the natural. In fact, the whole Bible wouldn't make sense if there wasn't a greater purpose. And we'll understand these things one day when we go to heaven. I don't, we'll not understand everything on earth now, but when we get to heaven. But in the meantime, it takes great faith to trust God. 
we've got to recognize that Jesus controls our lives, not the person who hurt us. Let's see uh, what it says God controls. Proverbs 21, verse 1, it says, The king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. Even a strong monarch can be directed by God. And if someone is hurt, if someone is hurt you, someone is hurt you, God is allowed it. If someone is hurt you, God is allowed it. Sometimes he orchestrates things to happen. Even in the lives of monarchs and key leaders, God will do something. Doesn't it override the will? We'll look at that in a moment. We, we, we read in the book of Ezra that the Lord moved on the heart of King Cyrus so that he called for all the Jews to be sent back to Jerusalem so that they could rebuild the walls and rebuild uh, the temple. Book of Ezra, Ezra chapter 1. He says, In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people, may his God be with him. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And let each survivor in whatever place he sojourns be assisted by the men of, of his place with silver and gold, with goods and with beast besides free will offerings for the house of god that is in uh, jerusalem and then under Darius in ezra chapter 6 we read again that he continued to let the people uh to let the people to build his attitude was changed by god ezra chapter 6 Verse 1 to 12. It says, Then Darius, the king, made a decree, and, and search was made in Babylon, in the house of the archives, where the documents were stored, and in Ekbatana, the citadel, that is the province of Media. A scroll was found on which was written a record in the first year of Cyrus the king, Cyrus the king issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt, the place where sacrifices were offered, and let its foundation or its foundations be retained. Its height or its height shall be 60 cubits and its breadth 60 cubits with three layers of great stones and one layer of timber. Let the cost be paid from the royal treasury. And also let the gold and silver vessels of the house of God, which the book Nazar took out of the temple that is in Jerusalem and brought to Babylon, be restored and brought back to the temple that is in Jerusalem, each to its place. You shall put them in the house of God. Now, therefore, Tatenai, governor of the province beyond the river, Shita Bozeniah, and your associates, the governors, who are in the province beyond uh, the river. Keep away. Let the work on this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews rebuild this house of God on its side. Moreover, I make a decree regarding what you shall do for these elders of the Jews for the rebuilding of this house of God. The cost is to be paid to these men in full and without delay from the royal revenue. 
the tribute of the province from beyond the river and whatever is needed bulls rams or sheep for burnt offerings to the god of heaven wheat salt wine or oil as the priests at jerusalem require let that be given to them day by day without fail that they may offer pleasing sacrifices to the god of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his sons also i make a decree that if anyone alters this edict a beam shall be pulled out of his house and he shall be impaled on it and his house shall be made a dunghill may the god who has caused his name to dwell there overthrow any king or people who shall put out a hand to alter this or to destroy this house of god that is in jerusalem i Darius, make a decree let it be done with all diligence god works in the lives of kings but he doesn't just take charge of our will in the book of daniel one of the officials showed favor to daniel god uses people and he remove and, and and he moves on their hearts god uses people and he moves on their on their heart but he doesn't take away your free will when you're in ministry you have to make decisions and god still influences your heart second corinthians chapter 8 second corinthians chapter 8 and i'm reading verse 16 to 17 but thanks be to god who put into the heart of titus take note but thanks be to god who put into the heart of titus the same earnest care i have for you for he not only accepted our appeal but being himself very earnest he's going to you of his own uh, accord i'm about to ask you a question did god put it in his heart or was this his own initiative well it's neither it's both god moves and then he and then he 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 acted god moves and then we act that there's there's a divine mystery a divine mystery and so you must never look at things just on the surface because it's not people who are controlling your life it's god working with you and god working on your life jesus controls your life not the person who hurt you and you mustn't give that power to someone Christopher Wright, the pastor, said this, God acts through human actions without turning people into puppets. Let's read another scripture in the book of Acts. Or not the book of Acts, forgive me. The book of Esther. Esther chapter 1, or chapter 6, forgive me. Esther chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 1 to 13 on the night the on, on on that night forgive me on that night the king could not sleep and he gave orders to bring the book of memorable deeds the chronicles and they were read before the king and it was found written uh, how Mordecai had told uh, about Bigthana and Teresh two of the king's eunuchs who uh, guarded the threshold and who had sought to lay hands on King ah Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honor or distinction has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? I pray for you that if you've been forgotten, may the books of remembrance be opened so you'll be remembered and be rewarded in the name of Jesus. What honor or distinction has been bestowed on, Mordec on, on, on Mordecai for this? The king's young men who attended him said nothing has been done for him and the king said who is in the court who is in the court of the king's palace to speak to the king about having Mordecai hand on the gallows that he had prepared for him have i have i skipped this okay i'll go back to it it says the king's young men who attended him said nothing has been done for him and the king said who is in the court yeah, I think I skipped it. I skipped some. Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to speak to the king about having Mordecai hang on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's young men told him, Haman is here, or Haman is there, standing in the court. And the king said, let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king said to him, what should be done to the man whom the king delights to honor? And Haman said to himself, 
whom would the king delight to honor more than me? And Haman said to the king, For the man whom the king delights to honor, let royal robes be brought, which the king has worn, and the horse that the king has ridden, and uh, on whose head a crown is set, and let the robes and the horse uh, be handed over to the one to, to one of the king's most noble officials. Let them dress the man whom the king delights to honor, and let them let let them uh, lead him on the horse through the square of the city, proclaiming before him, "That shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor." Then the king said to Haman, "Hurry, take the ropes and the horse, as you have said, and do so to Mordecai the Jew." Who sits at the king's gate leave out nothing that you have mentioned so Haman took the ropes and the horse and he dressed Mordecai and led him through the square of the city proclaiming before him that shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor then Mordecai returned to the king's gate but Haman hurried to his house mourning and with his head covered and Haman told his wife Zeresh and all his friends everything that had happened to him then his wife then, then his wise men then his wise men and his wife Zeresh said to him if Mordecai before whom you have begun to fall is of the Jewish people you will not overcome him but will surely fall before him the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word Mordecai was honored and Haman ended up being hung on the gallows he made for Mordecai god is able to influence even though you not being able to sleep god is able to influence even through you not being able to sleep i'll say that again god is able to influence even through you not being able to sleep you are sitting up and texting someone god is working in everything you've got to learn how to handle life's heads because they are more than just the inconvenience the little discomfort there's something much bigger sometimes god will allow things and in the end he will use it for his glory i want to ask you today are you being hurt by someone don't react and don't just and, and don't just look at that because there might be a bigger blessing that's coming that's why god is allowing it you remember in december uh 2010 it was reported that 25 year old uh, joanna yates was missing they couldn't find her body she left her keys and phone in a flat so they began the investigation she lived in a flat in bristol the landlord also lived in the building and the, and the police decided to question him his name is christopher jeffries the minute they laid eyes on him they noticed he was a weirdo was a retired schoolmaster, impeccable reputation, but he had an odd way about him. His hair was long and it blew in the wind. He lived by himself, highly educated man. He was arrested for 48 hours. The press really hurt him. They began to publish stories about him. He was, they called him Pippin Tom. He was responsible for the murder of another woman. They even suspected him fiddling with a boy at the school. When up until that point, his reputation was absolutely perfect. When Jesus comes into your life, he enables you to transform things that could otherwise hurt you. And today, God wants to work in you. He wants to heal your heads. He wants to heal your life. He wants to restore you. If you're listening to me today, and you haven't handed over ownership of your life to Christ. I want to encourage you to do that. God wants to change your life. He wants to transform your life. He wants to do something in you. I'm going to pray a simple prayer with you. It's your prayer. I'm going to give you the words. You are the heart to it. And pray sincerely from the depth of your heart. Say this after me. Say, Father, today I recognize that I'm a sinner who needs a savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Have mercy on me. I believe with all my heart that you died for me and you rose again. And with my mouth, I confess your Lordship over my life. Change me. Make me a new person. Change me from the inside. 
Help me live for you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and write my name in the last book of life in heaven. If you pray this simple prayer, I want you to know you are born again, you are saved, you are now a child of God. Welcome into God's family. Heaven is rejoicing because of you. I want to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to you for tuning into this program. And I trust that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. I look forward to coming your way next time. But before I sign off, I want you to always remember, if you want a life that is going to be as abundant as possible without chaos and confusion, don't do it any other way. Do it by God's way. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollard's Hill Library, CR41LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.